Let's go back to the two spur gears we had drawn previously. These are 16 tooth spur gears with a diametral pitch of eight. And I have these gears aligned so that the teeth are just contacting at the pitch point, which occurs at the intersection of the pitch circles with the line of centers that connects the centers of the two gears. This is an important thing because as we start to talk about contact stresses, we want to evaluate the contact at the pitch point between the two gears so we can exploit previous equations of contact mechanics to determine what the contact stresses are when two teeth are in mesh. In order for us to understand what's happening between contact and gear teeth, we need to go back to chapter three in Shigley and take a look at what happens when we press two solid cylinders together. In the most general case, we constrain the bottom side of one of these cylinders and we apply a load to the upper cylinder and press the two together. In this case, we show the upper cylinder having a diameter D1 and the lower cylinder having a diameter D2. And so cylinder one also has different Poisson's ratio and elastic modulus than does cylinder two. They are contacting over a length L. As we push them together, we develop a flat spot between the two cylinders. And this also develops a parabolic stress profile as we push the cylinders together. Now we need to know the width of that parabolic profile, which we will call 2B, and we need to know the maximum pressure. Pressure. This has been worked out in elasticity, and it turns out that the half width of the contact, so the half width of the contact patch is related to the force that's pushing the cylinders together, the length of the cylinders, and the elastic properties up here in the numerator, as well as the ratio of one over the diameters down here in the denominator. The maximum pressure is again associated with the force that's pushing the two cylinders together, but it's divided by BL, where B is now what we calculate up here in equation 373. We have to combine all of that together to get after the maximum pressure. I can get a better understanding and visualization of the contact between two cylinders by building two cylinders in Fusion 360, meshing them, constraining them, applying a load, and observing the contact stress that develops as we apply the load. This is a finite element animation of contact between two cylinders. I apply a load to them and I see an increase in the stress consistent with the equations that we just showed. When we mesh two gears together, you know that the force of interaction between the mating gear teeth follows the pressure line. The pressure line is shown here and the teeth exert equal and opposite forces on each other. And that pressure angle is given by phi sub n and it is a characteristic of the particular gear. This image was actually extracted from Wikipedia and it's a very interesting example because you can see that we have base circles here and here. We have pitch circles here and down here that touch each other at the pitch point, but we didn't leave any clearance at the bottom line. So in this case, the A dendum is equal to the D dendum, and so we would have tooth interference, not a particularly good example of what we need to do for meshing teeth. But we always represent these gears as pitch circles, and this is an example of a pinion, the smaller gear, Gear, that is meshing with another gear. And you know that the black circle here represents the pinion and it would have a pitch diameter of DP. The gear would have a pitch diameter of DG and they would be kissing each other right here at the pitch point. Now I have also taken the liberty to draw base circles associated with each of these gears and the base circles are shown in blue. So you know that we have a radius for the pinion, which would be the pitch diameter of the pinion divided by two. And we have a radius of the gear. These radii are drawn from the centers of the gear. The pitch radius of the gear is the pitch diameter of the gear divided by two. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the liberty of deleting the pitch circles and just including the base circles. I'm going to go a step further and draw the pressure line that represents the line Line of action of the force that app operates between these two gears and I'm going to take note of the fact that it is tangent to each of those and that line length is 
the arc of action, essentially. It represents the length over which we have this tooth engagement. Now, you may also remember that we draw the involute profiles from the base circle. So we have a base circle radius for the pinion, I'll call it RBP, and we also have a base circle radius for the gear, and I'm going to call that RBG, base circle radius of the gear. Now, we can easily sort out what these radii are, and you know that the base circle radius of the pinion is just going to be equal to the pitch radius of the pinion times the cosine of the pressure angle. So the base radius of the gear is the pitch radius of the gear times the cos of that same pressure angle. We want to represent the tooth interaction at the pitch point using effective cylindrical contact. And we can do that relatively easily by drawing a couple of cylinders that have the appropriate diameters. What are we going to use? The radius of the cylinder for the pinion is going to be this length. The radius of the cylinder associated with the gear is going to be this length right here. And so you now see that if we get rid of these base circles, and I can get rid of a few more things to make my life just a little bit simpler, this radius associated with the pinion tooth. I have to draw a circle in there to represent the pinion cylinder. Draw a circle to also represent the gear cylinder and I can get rid of everything else. And you will notice that I now have two representative cylinders that I can push together using the gear tooth force, and I can sort out what the contact stress is between these two cylinders, which is equal to the contact stress for the gear teeth. Now, all I have to do is figure out what the heck this effective radius is for each of these, but it's simpler than you think, because if you go back and take a look at, we have the pitch radius of the pinion, and we have the pitch radius of the gear, we know that the effective radius of the cylinder that represents the pinion going to be equal to the pinion radius times the sine of the pressure angle. That for the gear is going to be equal to the gear radius times the sine of the pressure angle. And so we now know that we can figure out what the radii are of the effective contacting cylinders that represent the pinion and the gear. Now that we have a full understanding of how we convert involute profiles at the pitch point into effective cylinder radii, and we know we can use the contact stress equations, we are ready to calculate the contact stress that occurs between two gears meshed and transmitting load through the pitch point. That's equation 1411 from Shigley, shown here. And you will note that it appears as a square simply because we squared the right-hand side of the equation. We have the tangential force, which is easy to get to. We know that for spur gears, the pressure force acting between the teeth times the cosine of the pressure angle is going to be equal to the tangential force. And so that force P is just going to be given by our tangential force divided by the cosine of the pressure angle. Angle. That's how we get this cosine in this equation. F is the face width. R1 and R2 are the radii that we calculate using the pinion and gear relationships that we just developed. And the elastic properties are those for both the pinion and the gear. We usually replace those elastic properties with an effective elastic contact coefficient C sub P, and then we find that the contact stress is equal to minus C P times our KV, which is just the velocity correction factor, times our transverse force divided by face width times cosine of the pressure angle, all of that multiplied by 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, and in the brackets we take the square root. We have the negative sign because that represents compression. And there you have it. That is the basis for contact force occurring between gear teeth.